Hello everybody, in this next series of lecture videos we're going to be talking about gross domestic product or GDP which is one of the three main um, macroeconomic statistics that economists usually talk about. Uh, gross domestic product, unemployment, and the labor market, and inflation. So we're going to start this series of uh, lecture videos with gross domestic product. At the beginning here we're going to talk about how do we measure GDP? What What is it? Uh, what does it include and what it doesn't include? Uh, and then talk about what are the parts of GDP. In the next couple videos, we'll be talking about how do we compare GDP across time and across geographies and how it relates to well-being. Okay, so let's jump in here with this first set of notes where we're going to be actually talking about what GDP is and how it's measured. So... It is the most widely used statistic uh, to basically analyze the total incomes in a, in a country, the size of a, a nation's economy. Um, and we use this to compare how we grow over time and uh, also to compare across geographies. Uh, and it's largely a, a statistic used by politicians to gauge the success of an economy. So it is measuring several things here all at once. All of them are in dollar values, uh, but the first one is going to be the market value of total production. So the market value of total production. Okay, uh, so that is a dollar amount. The next one is the total income of everyone in an economy. Total income of everyone in an economy. And the last is the total expenditure of an economy's output. The total expenditure Total expenditure on an economy's output. Okay, and we can view this idea of GDP measuring both income and expenditure and the value of everything that's produced through this idea of a circular flow diagram where we're going to kind of simplify the economy, break it down. Uh, down into its most fundamental uh, entities, which would be households and firms. And so if we think about the flow of goods and services and also the flow of money in an economy, in a macro economy, we have all the households uh, providing factors of production, which we can primarily think about as labor, to firms. So these are factors of production. Factors of production, for example, labor. So we provide labor to firms in exchange for income. Okay, and in the whole economy, that income is going somewhere. So generally speaking, whether directly or basically through a bank, financial media intermediary, that money is flowing to firms as expenditure in exchange for goods and services. So goods and services come to us as individuals. Goods and services. And we're using our income to spend that money through expenditure on those goods and services. And what do the firms do with that? They hire us to, to help make more things provide income, and it goes back and forth kind of in this circular flow. It is uh, certainly um, simplified. I mean, you'd also, in reality, you'd have banks, you'd have the government, um, you'd have other, other countries as well, so imports and exports going in and out of the country, um, and flows of money and flows of goods and services going every which way, right? Um, but to simplify, if we think about the fundamental part of a macroeconomy, we have this idea that income is flowing 
throughout the economy and expenditure is flowing throughout the economy such that for the economy as a whole, total income is equal to total expenditure. Okay. Um, so in the macro economy, we can measure GDP by looking at the total national income or all the expenditure on a nation's goods. Uh, or we could also look at the value of these goods and services that are being produced. Okay, um, so that's kind of what GDP is measuring. Let's go ahead and do our formal definition of GDP, which is the value of the output, the value of the output of all final goods and services goods and services produced within a country in a given period of time produced within a country in a given period of time Okay, and I want to actually break down a, uh, a few parts of this. So value means that we're going to be measuring this in dollars. We're going to talk specifically about what do we mean by all goods and services, and what do we mean by final goods and services. So <clears throat> let's do that now. All uh, does not include everything, so it doesn't include used items. Used items, things that were produced in a previous year, were already included in a different year's GDP. So those are not included. And then something that we call imputed value, uh, goods or goods and services. I'll just put items again. Um, imputed value items. Uh, let's, let's, act, let's say goods and services. Same for used goods and services. Um, these would include things like Things happening at home, home production, whether you're cooking yourself or you're doing your own lawn care or raising your own children, because these are not traded in the formal market, they're not included in GDP. Now, if you hire a landscaping company to mow your lawn, all of a sudden that becomes a service and that would be included in GDP. Uh, and similarly, if we have informal, informal and illegal markets okay this could be something as simple as kind of trading among your neighbors or uh, at a very small informal type of farmers market uh, to illegal markets for drugs and other kind of illicit activities not measured in the formal economy so therefore not included in gross domestic product Okay, so all does not include anything, every, everything, and final does not include intermediate goods and services. So here, only the final product counts. Only final product counts. And this avoids double counting. I'll give you an example. Avoids double counting. Uh, for example, take tires on a new car. So the car manufacturing company is buying the tires from the tire company. If that initial purchase of the tire of the four tires to put on the car gets included in the GDP calculation, you count the purchase of the tires and you count the purchase of the new car. The new car's price has the tires factored into the price. So if you're counting um, those tires when they're initially bought and with the, the whole car purchase, that those tires are getting double counted. So when we calculate GDP, we're only calculating final goods and services, not any of these intermediate goods. On the other hand, if you personally need to go get a new tire for your car that you already have. If you go buy a new tire from a tire shop, that is kind of a retail item, a final product um, that you're 
you're going out and buying, that tire would be included in this year's GDP. Okay, um, and so this idea of final and kind of intermediate goods and services is related to this idea of value added. And so let's look at that. We can think of value added as the value of output minus the value of intermediate goods. So I'll write that down. Value of output minus the value of intermediate goods. Okay, there's our formula. And just as a very simple example, suppose we're uh, talking about bread. And if we start with nothing, the farmer starts with nothing and gets some seeds and plants some wheat. Let's suppose that they sell this wheat to a miller for a dollar. The miller takes the wheat, does his own process, converts it into flour, and sells the, the flour to, oh, this is going to be for $3, uh, to a baker. And the baker makes bread out of the flour, sells it to the consumer for $6. Okay, so the value added in each kind of line of this production process, the farmer takes nothing and turns it into something worth a dollar. The miller takes something that was worth a dollar and adds two dollars of value, uh, turning that one dollar thing into something worth three dollars. So a uh, two dollar value add, and the baker takes a three dollar uh, bag of flour and turns it into a six dollar loaf of bread. So from three to six, the baker is adding three dollars of value. And if we add up the total value added, we're going to get $6. And we're going to see that's another way how we can calculate GDP. You add up the value added along everywhere in the production process, you get $6. You add total expenditure at the end, you're going to get $6. And so the GDP is $6 measured in two different ways. And just as a side note, the value added by the consumer is nothing. Uh, it's zero. The consumer takes the final product and consumes that value. So by definition, the consumer is not adding value but consuming the final good. Okay. So that's the, the definitions of, of GDP, uh, what it includes, what it doesn't include. In the next video, I will talk to you about the components of GDP. What do we include um, in a nation's total income? Where is all that money being spent? Okay, so uh, we're going to pick that up in the next video. I will see you there.